Hi, this is Loretta from Erasable Inc. in Tampa, Florida, nurse practitioner and co-owner of Erasable Inc. We're going to be talking about picogenesis treatment today, uh, the global treatment as well as the spot treatment. Um, what I want to do is kind of focus on clinical techniques. Um, the Enlighten 3, which is Kutera's device for pigment, which does really well for tattoo removal as well as hy um, hyperpigmentation, um, has three wavelengths on it, the 1064, 532, and the 670. Um, it's important to make sure that you use the right wavelengths for the condition that you're treating because you can potentially make hyperpigmentation worse. Um, so in a quick review, 532 is typically used for skin types 1 through 3. Um, 670 is typically used for skin types 1 through 4. And then 1064 is safe for all skin types. Now my choice for using each wavelength is going to be different de depending on the patient's skin type. Um, even though I can use 1064 for all skin types, removal of pigmentation is actually better with 532 in skin types 1 through 3. So if I can use 532, that's going to be my go-to because I'm going to get faster clearance, better clearance, um, with fewer treatments in order to do that. Um, for the my skin types like Asians and Hispanics, uh, skin types 4 or dark 3s, I'll use 670. And I will also use 670 when it comes to body. So I actually do not like to use 532 on the body. And the reason is, is that sometimes you'll have hyper, resultant hyperpigmentation surrounding the tissue, and it can last anywhere between three to six months. And that's really the opposite of what your patient is coming to you for. So I do not like to use 532 on extremities, anything outside of the face, the neck, and very, very rarely do I use it for the chest. Um, with 1064, what we use that for our darker skin types, it does take more sessions to get rid of uh, pigmentation with 1064, uh, and that depends on the type of pigmentation that we're looking at. Uh, I personally, when I'm doing hyperpigmentation on skin types five and six, I just like to do global treatments versus spot treatment. You can do spot treatments. Um, my favorite settings for each of those categories, so for 532, and I'm actually gonna show you the treatment. With 532, Loretta's favorite settings is 0 0.5 joules picosecond. That's where I like to start, and I'm looking for mild uh, frosting. If you see risk frosting with your 532, you are probably too high. That pigment will come to the surface and fall off and it'll look great, but then you'll have hyperpigmentation underneath. So you're no better off than you were when you started. Um, so 0.5 to 0.7 is typically my settings. If I'm using 670, I will usually use somewhere between 0.7 joules to 0.9 joules a picosecond. And um, then with 1064, I will usually use somewhere between 3.0 joules picosecond to 3.6 for spot treatment, not for global treatment. With a spot treatment at 3.0 to 3.6 on a skin type 5 and 6, you're going to hear a really loud, really loud snap. So don't let it surprise you because if it does, it surprises you and it surprises the patient and everybody's like, ah. How do I know that? Because I've done that before. So now I'm just warning you so you know that that could potentially happen. So we have our lovely model here, Ashley, and I'm going to be showing you guys a spot treatment on her. So Ashley is very fair. I would classify her as a skin type 2. She hasn't been out in the sun. We're going to do a spot treatment on her arm. Now, I already said I don't typically like to use 532 on the arm. However, we're just going to use her as an example, and we're going to use a teeny tiny little spot right here. But if I were doing her arm and I had other technology, I probably would choose um, I, I would choose 670 versus 532, or if I had IPL technology, I might choose that if she's got um, spots all, all up and down her arm. So I'm going to start with 532. When you're using 532 for your treatments, you want to make sure that your spots is the exact size of your lesion. If you treat outside of your lesion, you're actually going to have hypo or hyperpigmentation because melanin is a target for 532 and you don't want to depigment the skin or hyperpigment the skin, okay? Another important thing to remember about 532 is that you are going to have, your spot is not exactly the same exact size as the laser beam that comes out and it's not 100% centered. It is with 1064. As big as your spotlight is, your guide light is the size of the laser energy that comes out, and you can pretty much count on it being um, aligned with where you're going to fire. With the 532, it's a little bit off. So what you need to do is fire your first one, look at it, note where it's at, and then adjust based on that. And that's unfortunately just how it is with 532. I've had a lot of different uh, laser devices with 532, and I feel like that's just a common limitation across all lasers. Um, across the board. And so again, we're looking for mild uh, frosting versus significant frosting, okay? 
So with the 532, I'm going to start with 0.5, so you can come in closer. The little teeny tiny lesion that we're going to go for is this guy right here. Can you guys see it? I've already cleaned her skin. I would normally uh, shave any hair that's there because you don't want a competing chromophore, but in this case, we're just doing it as an example. So this is a really small spot. My rep rate, I'm going to keep at one hertz. I'm on picosecond settings, and I'm going to turn my spot down to a spot of three. It's pretty tiny, tiny lesion, right? So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my laser. Okay. Good. Pink goggles. Good. And my laser is ready. And I've got it set appropriately. So another important note is to make sure that your distance from your standoff is exactly the right distance away from the skin. If you are too high up, you are actually going to uh, defocus the lens and you're gonna have a very different uh, absorption of the laser energy. I happen to have my spotlight on this flashing spot and the reason I did that is because I wanna know when I'm using 532. I used to always have the, the constant light on here and sometimes if you forget to reset your laser, you fire 532 instead of 1064 and that's not good. <laughs> All right, so here it is on top of the lesion. Can you guys see that? All right, and ready? Don't come too close, I'm sorry. A little bit further away, great. And it probably is gonna be easier if you come from up here. All right, ready? One, two, and three. Good. All right, so you can kind of see it's a little bit, I don't know if you can see it in the camera. So the reason I had her pull away from that is because um, 532 will fry your camera lens. Yeah, so you can't be too close with 532. Um, it's a little bit different with 670 and 1064. So it's really hard to see with the camera, but I can already tell that this lesion is a darker color. And we treated just a little bit outside of that lesion. I probably could have taken it down a little bit more. I'm not gonna hit that guy again. That's gonna turn a darker color, scab up and fall off. She might have a tiny bit of hyperpigmentation surrounding that. Again, that's why I don't like to use 532 on the body. I prefer to use it for the face or the, or the neck, and very rarely do I use it for the chest, okay? All right, so on to 670. So treating uh, benign pigment lesions with 670, we're gonna change out our goggles here. And our next guy that we're gonna treat on Ashley is... So come on in closer. So 670 is a little bit more forgiving with your video camera. So we're gonna get this guy right here and I am going to adjust my settings. So the lighter the lesion, the higher the energy you need. The darker the lesion, the less energy you need, right? So if I'm treating a bunch of lesions all over the face or the body, I'm gonna start with my darker ones and then as I get to the lighter ones, I'm gonna turn the energy up. I also start with one get the settings perfect, and then I'll treat all of the ones that look like the same density of color, and then I'll move to the lighter ones. That just makes it a little bit easier so I'm not constantly adjusting the laser. Okay, so we're gonna hit this guy right here, and I'm actually gonna take it to uh, 0.9, and my spot is at a three millimeter spot. Okay, so again, I wanna make sure that my distance is appropriate, so the standoff is kind of touching the skin here. And I will oftentimes kind of retract the skin just a little bit and I will hold the laser steady with my thumb. Great, and right on top of it and ready, one, two, and three. Great. Good, so you can, I can actually see that I've treated on one side of it, so I'm gonna go over and treat the other side. Great, so I can see that frosting from here. It might be a little bit hard with the camera, but I can definitely see the frosting there. So I should expect this to turn a slightly darker color. Um, you will find that the spot size, to me, with the 670 is a little bit smaller than the guide light. And so um, I, I think that one actually turned out quite perfectly. So that is the spot treatment using the 532 and the 670. If I were gonna do the same thing with 1064, somewhere between 3.0 to 3.6 joules picosecond, um, and you're gonna hear a really loud snap. We're gonna skip that part. Um, when I go to do my global treatment, so I do spot treatment first and then global treatment, so we're gonna pretend we're doing Ashley's face. My preference for the patient position is to have them completely laying back. So I'm gonna go ahead and put her back while I'm talking to you guys about it. Um, the goggles go on, right? And then we do the global treatment. So you want to be in a position where you're comfortable because a 30 minute, 25 minute treatment for a global picogen 
um, can be a little bit taxing on the, the hand. So make sure that you're in a comfortable position. If you can get the laser behind the patient, that's probably the easiest way to do it as if you were doing a facial or working from behind. Um, but in this scenario, uh, our room is not big enough to do that. So we're gonna kind of have her like this. So what I'll do is I'll bring the laser over. And anytime I'm moving my laser, I always scoot the handpiece because I definitely don't want it banging around anywhere. Okay. So I'm not actually going to treat Ashley's face because we got a bunch of videos to do after this and I don't want to have her take her makeup off, but I'm just going to show you guys the technique. So global treatment for 1064, I would typically do somewhere between 0.5 joules picosecond to 1.1 also based on skin type. So darker skin types, I'm going to use a lower energy setting because you're gonna get way more absorption. For most of my Asians and Hispanics, between 0.5 to 0.6 is perfect. I do my treatments at 0.5 and I get fantastic results. The number of pulses that you're gonna do is different for skin revitalization versus melasma treatment. I cannot emphasize this enough. It's different for skin revitalization versus melasma treatment. You're gonna be more conservative with your settings for melasma and you're gonna do a lot fewer pulses because you don't wanna make melasma worse by adding too much light and heat to the area. And so when I'm doing my melasma treatment, it's 1064, about 0.4 to 0 0.6, 0 0.7, rarely do I go above that. Number of pulses, typically between 2100 to 2800. Versus skin revitalization, I'm going to be treating somewhere between three to 5,000 pulses with a higher setting, okay? Um, I know people write to me all the time and they're like, I treated, I used the Pico uh, Genesis treatment and the melasma got worse. The melasma got worse, your energy settings were too high. I also do not do spot treatments for melasma. So if you're hitting 532 or 670 on melasma, what's gonna end up happening is that it's gonna scab up, it's gonna fall off, the patient's gonna call you at the two to three week mark and they're gonna be ecstatic because the skin underneath is brand new baby skin and it's not pigmented. By the time they come back to see you at four to six weeks, guess what? It's back and it comes back raging mad. Um, so it's usually darker. Um, I've also learned that lesson the hard way. And so my uh, treatment for melasma is typically just 1064 on low energy. Give it four to six weeks, use a skin lightening agent. By the time you hit treatment three, you're gonna see significant difference in it. And then you just do maintenance every six, nine or 12 months. Um, so I'm going to show you guys what I do. So Ashley is a good little patient there. She's already put on um, her her metal shields. Okay, so 1064 picosecond, and I'm if I were actually treating Ashley, I would have her at a 0.7 joules, 10 hertz, and then an eight millimeter spot. I do like that eight millimeter spot because I I feel like it's going to give me that depth that I'm looking for. So we're just going to show you my technique for doing it, but I'm not actually going to fire the laser. Okay. All right, and once these metal shields are on, I'm always talking to the patient so they know what's happening because it's a little scary to have a laser on and not exactly know what's happening. So I'll just remind her that we're gonna get started here. I like to hold the hair back, right? And this is how I would be treating her. So I'm gonna start with the forehead and treat from here to here. And then up and down, back and forth. And each area is gonna be using somewhere between um, four to 500 pulses, sometimes more, sometimes a little bit less, depending on what you're treating. Um, the movement is back and forth, and because the face is so contoured, you wanna make sure that you always have that 90 degree angle. So breaking it up into little uh, credit card size uh, portions makes it a little bit easier to maintain that distance from the skin. What I'm looking for with skin revitalization, which is what she would need because she doesn't have any melasma, then I wanna see some moderate erythema. If I'm treating melasma, the minute I see a hint of pink, I'm done in that area because I don't wanna put too much energy into the area. What you may find is if you, it starts to turn pink and you keep going um, and you turn away, you come back and it's beet red, you know, and now you know you've over treated. Okay, um, so that's my technique, and um, typically for the face, about three to 5,000 for skin revitalization, 2,100 to about 3,000 for melasma, and I do treat the whole face. I do not break up like, oh, if you only want one spot, or if you only want one little area of your face, it's the same cost to treat one little spot or the entire face. And really, you wanna treat your patient's entire face, because even though they may be fixated on one spot, the truth is, is if you treat the entire face, the face is gonna look younger, 
pores are going to be smaller, you're going to build collagen throughout the entire thing, and you have more even toned skin throughout the entire thing, your patients are going to be way happier. So this is Loretta from Erasable Ink. I hope this information was really helpful. Ashley, say goodbye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>